All right. Okay, guys. Well, <clears throat> for the, how many people actually know what Dark Star is or was? PBS days. Uh, very few. Anyways, well, Dark Star was my favorite PBS program. Uh, it was written by uh, a couple of guys in Toronto. Um, it was entirely machine language for one thing, so it was it was fast and clean and small, um, and uh, the color version of it, if you had somebody good that was, that was good at Petsky graphics, could make it beautiful. So, um, anyway, I've, since I've sort of uh, gotten re-interested in color stuff about five or six years ago, I've been determined to make Dark Star work to the point where I could get it on the internet and people could call it if they wanted to. So, <clears throat> I'm, I'm almost there, and uh, I've got, finally got the last couple of problems sorted out just, just recently, so, anyways. Uh, I used to run a BBS called Realms of Mystery from about 88 to 94. Uh, I had about 75 to 100 callers, uh, regular callers. Uh, it wasn't as high as some other BBSs because I got caught up in the, the 416-905 split. And when, when I became a 905 number, suddenly half my callers disappeared because they couldn't figure out how to put 905 in front of the number anymore. Anyways, uh, finally closed it up in 1994. I think the call volume had dropped to less than five a week and people were complaining that they didn't want to have to run dark term just to call my BBS anymore and all this kind of stuff. So I just packed it in. Uh, over the, or, I mostly ran Darkstar 3.1, that was my favorite. Uh, I also tried Dark Star 88 for a while, but I didn't have a hard drive, and without a hard drive, it was just it was too slow because everything was a module, and it was just constantly loading stuff in and out, and it was it, it, it just didn't work very well on a floppy system. I also tried DMBBS for a while, but I didn't really care for it, and I used CBase 3.1 for a while. It was it was okay. It was. Uh, it was sort of at the end of the run when people wanted to change and I didn't really want to, but I put it up anyway and then I just gave up. So. Anyway, I, I held on to almost all my old stuff, so I actually had original Darkstar discs. Darkstar has a very uh, pain in the ass level of copy protection on it. And, uh, and I, I was never able to find uh, anybody that had successfully cracked it properly. There was some there was some guy that used to distribute obviously snapshotted copies of it, but the snapshotted copy didn't work because you still needed the original disk to boot all the way into the BBS, so it was, it was ridiculous. Anyways, so <clears throat> in early 2007 I hooked up with a guy, if anybody's online <coughs> you'll be familiar with a guy that goes by the name TLR online. He's from Sweden. He's a super clever guy and uh, he was able to remove all that stuff after I provided nibbles for him with uh, MNIB. And, uh, and we, we made a release on CSDB in, on March 24, 2007. <coughs> Uh, I hadn't find, found my original documentation at that time, so I wrote a text file that's, that's wildly inaccurate because it was entirely from memory. And, uh, I mean, you know, uh, 20 years on, my memory isn't exactly as accurate as I thought it would be. So, so sen since then, I've located an original manual and scanned it, and the next time I update things, it'll be included with that. Uh, my website is pipesup.ca and there's a dark start page there with a bunch of information but I, I mostly need to redo that too. So there were, there were two big time problems when I first started playing with dark start to try to connect it to the internet. The first problem I ran, to, ran into was when you're connecting a BBS to the internet, um, you use a PC as a, as a modem. Your PC acts like a modem using 
Jim Brain's TCP server or Leaf's BBS server. Um, but unlike a real modem, the PC has to know what baud rate you want to talk on the serial port, and it can't it can't modify its own. It's not like a modem where when you you set your baud rate in your terminal program, and the next character you type, your modem realizes what baud rate you're typing at. Um, so Darkstar 3.1 only supports 1200 baud, so I figured, okay, well, we'll set TCP serve to talk at 1200 baud. Booted up the BBS, and I found that Darkstar always insists on sending modem reset commands at 300 baud. Always, 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 no matter what, it wants to talk to the modem at 300. It accepts incoming 1200 connections, but as soon as it has to do a reset, it wants to talk at 300. So that was a problem. The other problem was that, for whatever reason, whenever you try to access a directory off anything but a 1541, 1541 or 1571, Darkstar can't find any files on the disk. It returns the blocks free and nothing else. And that wasn't exactly a show-stopping problem, but on my BBS, I used to have two 1581s for space, and it was always a pain in the butt because Darkstar could find files and, and everything would work okay. But when you're trying to, when you're when you're the sysop and you're trying to look at what files are actually there on your disk, you can't. So you got to reset your BBS, and it was a pain in the butt. So I want to fix that too. But the modem issue was the biggest thing, so I decided to tackle that first. So. Since back in the day, I was not a programmer, and I didn't really care about programming too much, and uh, I was mostly a BBSer and game player and stuff, uh, I had to start from scratch, scratch. So I found a dis uh, piece of, like a cross, a cross disassembler, if you will. DXA runs on Windows, runs on Linux. Used it to dis disassemble the modem driver. The modem driver I used was the, the new 1670 driver, which was basically just a, a Hayes driver sent sent to mo Hayes modem commands. <coughs> uh, Decompile the modem driver is only about just uh, just about a K or so in size. Uh, the disassembly was pretty good. It generates automatic labels that don't make any sense. So I went through the source code, figured out exactly what each routine was doing, each labeled routine, changed all the labels to make sense so I could make sense of it. Uh, com recompiled it with XA, DXA's companion, got a byte, you know, got a, an exact <coughs> compile so I, I knew I didn't screw anything up. So once, once I'd done that, looked at the code, and the baud rate settings aren't in the modem driver. So, okay, well, that was a waste of time. So, <coughs> so I had to start searching through the main BBS code. So at first I tried to, I had to figure out how baud rates get set on 60 boards because I had no idea. So uh, anyway, I, I grabbed a copy of the crack that TLR, TLR did for me. Used a utility called UNP64 which Ian Coog writes, another guy from the Europe, which, uh, which automatically detects a whole bunch of different uh, packers, so it'll unpack the code so you actually get your code to look at. Ran it through DXA, disassembled, disassembled the thing, and then started searching for any occurrences of, of uh, storing to location 0293, which is one of the quick locations involved in setting baud rates. So when you store a 0, 08 at 0, 0293, that's part of how you get 1200 baud. There's a bunch of other stuff involved. But anyway, I found, I found this, which after tracing it a bit in Vice, was the routine I was looking for. That, that's what in Darkstar sets. 1200 up. So the easiest thing I thought to do was to add a, add a well not a jump, but add a JSR to 78E9 in my modem driver, recompile it, um, 
recompiled the modem driver, booted up and vice, tried it out, and suddenly Dark Star was resetting the modem at 1200. So, first problem solved. The next one was more of a pain in the neck, actually, and I only finally figured this out the other day. <clears throat> You'd think it would be easy to locate where the code was uh, reading a directory from, but if you don't know what you're doing, it's very difficult. <laughs> so anyway, I taught myself how to use the, the uh, monitor in WinVice, and in, in WinVice you can use it to, to step through code line by line. So I booted the BBS up, got to the point where I was just about to do a directory entry, and then started stepping through code and found it. This is the first thing it does when it tries to open a directory. <coughs> so, so into A it's putting uh, $13, which is 19 decimal. The other two values, and then it calls the kernel uh, set name routine. So <coughs> what, it, what this actually means is that it's looking at location 4600x for the file name that's 19 bytes long and then calling set. So when you're trying to do a directory, it's opening dollar, right? The dollar sign as a file name. That 13 makes no sense at all in any situation because file names can only be 16 characters long anyway. So this certainly is a bug that was in there originally. Um, Oddly enough, 1541s and 1571s return directories even though it's like that without a problem. Uh, 1581s don't, and anything else, uh, uh, micro IC doesn't. That doesn't work either. So, anyways. You might have did something that this guy was known for. He would send stuff down and actually reprogram the drive. Yeah. So he had his own OS on the drives for his own reasons. Uh, and well, so he may, you may actually have hit where he uh, was expecting something that he would be loaded on the actual drive, which is not compatible it, for future versions of it. It's possible, but as far as I could tell, that wasn't the case. After the BBS booted, all that code disappeared. As far as I could tell. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. The, the, uh, part of the load launch might have been putting his own routines into the drive itself because he was known for. Yes, yeah, well. Up. He had a speed up package on the drives that he did as well. Yeah, that was used in booting the system, right. but not once it was operating. I'm just. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. but anyways. Yeah. It, it, anyway, this slide just says I changed that 13 to a 1, and all of a sudden everything was working. So. <laughs> So, and, uh, and being the non-6502 coder that I am, I was very excited about finding this and like actually got up and cheered. It was totally ridiculous, but whatever. Change it to a 10? A 1. 1 by 1? Yeah, because when you're reading a directory, it's just a dollar, right? So anyways, a... After I hard coded it when I was in Vice and checked to make sure it worked, I tried editing the disassembly and reassembling it and loading that. That worked. Uh, I say at the bottom repack with Xmizer because that was what it was originally packed with. But when I when I'm doing that, I haven't totally figured out how to do that properly because it it corrupts the uh, the scroller. You'll you'll see you'll see that in a second. So, anyways. <coughs> So because this is way easier to show you in advice, I'm just going to do it here. <coughs> so I'm just starting up TCP serve to, uh, to act as a modem for advice. I'm 
got a, the RS-232 device one pointing to localhost 2532 where TCP, TCP server is listening. <coughs> so, uh, I can just tell that in. Yeah. Not the same without the drive mode system. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot more practical though. So that mess just above the ASPI color there uh, is supposed to be a scroller, and I don't know why that's been corrupted. But I'll talk to Daniel or talk to TLR about it and get it sorted. sets you could look. <laughs> Looks a little chunky in vice, but <laughs> Darkstar also uh, fully supported customized prompts for the entire BBS. So you load those at startup time. This is a prompt set that I had from April 27th, 93. And uh, That was when I was 19 years old, so some of the prompts are 19-year-old child, childish, let's say. <coughs> Darkstar is Y2K compatible, <laughs> but it only takes a two-digit year, so it doesn't really care. It doesn't take any two digits. <coughs> Is it going to have a Unix epoch problem? <laughs> no. <laughs> All you need to do is compile it in kernel. <laughs> so well, this is uh, where Darkstar sets up all it reads in all its rel files and stuff like this, and this takes forever. So in WinVice, you can do this. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the stars on the waiting a call screen in dark star indicate that it's talking to the modem and it resets the modem four times when you initially boot. I don't know why it does. If you get more stars after that, then you've got a problem and I saw more stars so many times. So, <laughs> okay, so we can log in. <laughs> I don't have any. Uh, I don't have my old screen set up on this image or anything like that. I, when I finally put this actually up on the internet, I'm hoping to have all that stuff. I still kept all my BBS files, so all the original screens and all that I still have. So there we go. So. Um, so, so Darkstar is very minimal, especially for the sysop. You go into the editor section, which is the sysop admin section, and that's the only prompt you get, and the help <laughs> is that, which is no help at all. Uh, 
Well, the first time we started this up, uh, I hadn't touched it for 20 years. Uh, I looked, or 10 years. I looked at that and I thought, what the hell? <laughs> Do those you, mean? Are you sure it's hell that you were saying? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I've got a, I've got a 1541 connected as a Dark Star Device One otherwise known as device 8, and I've got a 1581, emulated 1581 connected uh, as device 2 or 9. So this is the one that I had problems with. And now it displays. Yay. I love that game. <laughs> thought it was an appropriate game to have on for a demo. <laughs> I was just saying so for Android. Pardon? I was just saying that on the way over here to Alex, we should do modem wars for Android. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's right. Well, we did. So in the file <coughs> section, uh, <coughs> directories work. So you're planning on running it from Vice or from an actual 64? Well, I'd love to be able to run it from Vice, but the problem with Vice is that. Uh, the emulated serial port doesn't have carrier detect right. And what happens is, as long as a user logs out of the BBS properly, everything's fine. If somebody drops a connection while they're in the BBS, it just sits there. Because there's no carrier drop signal, or carrier detect signal. It's not, it's just not there. It's not emulated. So, so, uh, so you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a fairly competent C programmer, but I find the vice source is overwhelming, uh, and I, I don't even know where to start, so. <clears throat> anyway, that's it. So, are there any questions, or? Can you do a, a, a simulated login from a vice, another vice client? Uh, I probably can. Was that too difficult a question? So, I'll try. Okay, here, here's one of the silly prompts. to auto dial for two hours to get in. I remember when I ran my BBS, like on a busy weekday, I would get 50 to 60 calls in a day. Wow. People would be dialed until about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning so we would finally settle down. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, it was early file sharing too. I mean, it was, yeah. It was a real hub of, yeah. it was that and pumpy sort of, those were the two yeah. things that were around. Well, the scary thing is I got that kind of volume in vagina. I wasn't in Toronto. Really? Wow. 
The neat thing about this thing is if you use the, the matching terminal program, you had an HTML like tag language where you could embed. True. You know, and you know what? I mean, when I saw HTML when it came out years later, I thought, holy shit, it's, uh -huh. it's, it's so close. <laughs> yeah. you know? Oh, excuse me, sorry. He wanted to give the board operator the, the ability to really customize this whole thing. But you'd need a pretty strong hacker to get past his security as I remember the guy. These are still pieces. He was, yeah. He was brilliant. Yeah. No, I wrote my own, but I wasn't that brilliant. So. <laughs> this guy was crazy. I just mentioned to him off the cuff, uh, you know, when I got an Amiga. Wouldn't it be nice if I had load runner running on the Amiga? He came back two weeks later and had ported it. And it ran flawlessly, including all the levels and various things from Cordova. In two weeks, reverse engineering from 6502, a yeah. completely different construction set. Yeah. All the timings were perfect and it ran flawlessly. Brilliant programmer, obviously. He was crazy. Yes, <laughs> Does that matter for Try to do this one. Not I'm wondering if it needs IP. <coughs> but I'm just wondering. I've never tried this. I told you, hey man, I was like, 
19. <laughs> My BBS was far more boring than this. Well, there are two users on it. Well, once the uh, oh, one okay, I thought maybe he was trying to sell <coughs> themselves to two, two different clients. And say, of course, he's referring to back. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This has got a privacy violation. You can see whatever you're typing. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and then we all knew that, right? Yeah, that was right. right. See, that, that's so cool, it even gives you the picture of the So there it is, ready, ready for the next call. So, ta -da. It's amazing what you can do in Vice. It's, like if I ever set this up, I'll set it up. I'll probably set it up on, my, on a real 64. Win Vice makes this kind of stuff so easy. Any other questions? <coughs> I guess that's it for the formal program today, right?